Hey, how are you, Patty? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. I'm fine, thank you. Sorry, because I, last night I can't to assist uh, the class. No, we, no problem. We have we we have an emergency, and um, I went with the patient, uh, the ambulance to the mm -hmm. San Salvador, and uh, I returned about nine o'clock, nine nine p.m. Wow, very late. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm And how is the patient? Um. She's okay. She's okay because uh, in the Primero de Mayo hospital, mm -hmm. they uh, they had to um, to to give her uh, all the treatment, all the management, and mm -hmm. uh, a cesarean. Oh, cesarean. Cesarean section. Okay. Yeah. So she was, it, it was, uh, uh, she had to go quickly, very fast, huh? Yes. Um, it, it was a uh, premature pregnant. Okay. Premature pregnant. Well. Sometimes it's very complicated with pregnancies. Is you, there's so many things that can happen. Yes. Yes. And, and did you deliver the baby? Did you do the surgery? Yes, I I can do it, but in this case, uh, oh, we yeah. can't. I I can't because a uh, premature uh, is not. Um, possible to attend in my hospital, in the hospital when I work. Oh, okay. It's, it is a hospital of second level and uh, a premature pregnant have to, to be attended in the third level. It's more um, special attention. Okay. Is for the 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 incubator. Exactly. Okay, I understand. No problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My wife is a nurse, and my daughter is studying to be a doctor. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> interesting. Mm -hmm. So I understand. They always talk about their job. <laughs> my my two sons uh, are studying to study medicine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the USAM, I think you told me, right? See, si, yes, one of, of them uh, in the USAM, but the other one at the uh, at the University of El Salvador. Ah, uh, okay. My daughter's at Evangelica. Oh, mm -hmm. a good university. Mm -hmm. The same, <laughs> same for the National University. Yeah. Well, I see we have several people here. That's wonderful. It's great to see many people. Um, I see everybody has their cameras on. Oh, almost everybody is great. That way we can see each other. Um, Patricia is having a little issues with her camera. I think maybe it's the um, uh -huh, the camera itself. It, it seems like she's like in a, in a music video, right? Is it like, yeah, and then. Uh, <laughs> I, I listen, I listen very well. Uh, and no I see, I see you. No problem. As long as you can hear and participate, that's wonderful. Well, okay, that's thank you. <laughs> good. Um, yesterday, we finished off unit two. We finished off the midterm. Remember, if you haven't finished, please complete uh, one and two in the platform and the midterm, those three things. That way, you don't have a lot of work accumulated at the end and then have the stress. I, I, what, what, what happened? What do we do? And it, no, go little by little every day. And then at the end, before the course finished, you are relaxed. You don't have any problems. Today, we're going to begin unit three. Yesterday, I mentioned that we were going to look at relative 
pronouns. We're going to look at relative and non-relative. Super easy way is, is necessary or not necessary. <clears throat> That's it. <clears throat> That's the main idea. If the information is necessary, it's called relative. If it's extra or not necessary, is non-relative. How do you know? Super easy. You always know because if you eliminate this information, you think, is the sentence log logical? Is the sentence complete? If the answer is yes, then it's non-relative because it's extra. It's not necessary for the sentence. But if you eliminate and you read the sentence and you say, hey, I don't understand. Ah, then it's relative because this is, then it's necessary in the sentence. Now we're going to watch a little video and then I have some special activities to help you to make sure that you understand what these words are and how to use them. Welcome to a new section. Are you ready to give essential or optional information about someone or something? We hope you still remember how to do it. Defining and non-defining relative clauses. A defining relative clause defines or gives essential information about a noun. New Orleans is a city where people go to celebrate Mardi Gras. Salvador is famous for food and music that trace their origins to Africa. Okay, the first two sentences we can see, super essential, why? Because if I put New Orleans is a city, uh, it is not, you have no idea, and? What are they talking about? Why is it important or what happens? That's how you know that it's defining. You need the extra information. New Orleans is a city where people go to celebrate Mardi Gras. Ah, okay. The same in El Salvador. You can use different cities. Ataco, La Libertad, San Vicente, eh, San Sebastián, San Miguel, whatever. And that's the important. The extra information is the important information to make it a complete idea, okay? That's how we identify defining. Now let's look at the non-defining. A non-defining relative clause gives optional information about a noun. Notice the use of commas. Seoul, which hosted the 1988 Summer Olympics, is well known for its shopping. There are many temples and shrines in Kyoto, which used to be the capital of Japan. Defining relative clause. So if we take a look, let me just go back just a little bit. If we look about Seoul, if we eliminate that extra information, oh, if we eliminate it, let's see. Seoul is well known for shopping. It's still a complete idea. There are many temples and shrines in Kyoto. Ah, it's a complete. It's extra. We don't need to know that it's the capital of Japan. It's just nice to know about it. We don't need to know that the Olympics were in that country or in that city, but it's extra. Okay, that's the difference. Which used to be the capital of Japan. Defining relative clauses function like adjectives because they add information about a noun or a noun phrase. They must always immediately follow the noun they describe. They give essential information about the noun. People like to go to restaurants that have good food. Non-defining relative clauses. Non-defining relative clauses also describe a noun, but the information they give is not essential. They are set off by commas. That restaurant which has good food is the most popular one in town. Just to help you out a bit, look at the following charts. They are used in defining and non-defining relative clauses. Come up with your own sentences and ask your teacher to check them out for you. Okay. So as you can see here, when we talk about people, we're going to use the word who, right? When we talk about things, which are that, places, we're going to use where, uh, time, we're going to use when, and reason, we're going to use why. So if you're trying to describe a place, as an example, Santa Ana, San Miguel is a city in El Salvador where they have carnival every year. Ah, this is important because not every city in El Salvador has carnival. Mm -hmm. um, 
December is a time when many people celebrate Christmas. Ah, this is the important because Christmas is only celebrated during this time. That's the idea for the pronouns. I don't know if there are any questions about the usage or the meanings. Um, for example, when it, I don't know if you can give us an example of possessive. Of course. Using whose and whose. Okay. All right. So if you have a, an object, for example, a car, the person whose car is parked outside is blocking me. The owner of the car who is parked outside is blocking me. This is the idea of the possessive. Is that okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome, you're welcome, okay? So you can think about it like many times, like when people go to, to the store, when you go to Simán, La Curacao, what do they say? If your son or your daughter broke, you pay. So they have the child, the parents whose child broke the TV, please come. Uh, the owner or the parent, the people who belong, the child belongs to. This is the function of those relative pronouns. Is that better for whose? Yes. Yes. All right. Great. Oh, so now what are we going to do? Well, we're going to go into our breakout rooms. But first, we have a few exercises that we're going to do. We have link number one. And then you're going to have link number two. It's only two links, but the objective of these two, please open them. That way you don't lose them. That way when you go to the breakout rooms, you still have them. Remember that when you go to the breakout rooms, these are lost. And you, if you don't open it on your computer, you won't have access to them. The idea is for you to practice a little bit so that after you practice, we can come back and we can practice and complete exercises that are in the platform. So we have those two links. One moment, let me limit this one. And then we are going to come back and then do 3.2. The two links are to help you so that then you can use, join these sentences using those pronouns correctly. So the first one is multiple choice, which is the correct one to have the right idea. And then we're gonna come by and make the decision, okay? Okay, any questions before we go out that everybody was able to open the links? Yes. Yes. Okay, well, let's take a look. Let me get a few minutes. There we go. Hi, teacher. I don't know why I always come back with you. Okay, Karen, let me send you to another group. Let's try it again. Don't worry.
Okay, guys. So how did you feel? Was that, that exercise, did that help you a little bit better to understand how to use the different pronouns? A little bit. A little, a little bit. bit, because actually we are still confused. When are we going to use who and when is whom? So, yeah, we were wondering what, what, what is exactly the rule? The, uh, the same as in questions. So who you, who took my ice cream? The person, right? You're asking, you want to identify. You're, you're asking a question for who. Whom is the person like the person that receives it? So the person whom ate the, the food. So I'm going to help you out here so that we can understand a little bit better the function. Um, the main idea, do you remember active and passive? No. No, 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 no remember active and passive. Okay, okay. So mm -hmm. it's like, um, like, like baseball, like soccer, like a sport. One person does the action, the other person receives it. One person throws the ball, the other person catches. Who is for the people that do the action? Whom is the person who receives the action? That's the easiest way to imagine it, visualizing it, right? So, uh, Dennis, do you drive a car? Yep, I do. Okay. So, if you are driving the car, you are who? If you hit me with the car, I am whom? Because okay. you did the action. You did the action. The person who hit me. Oh, I was the person whom, whom was hit. I received the action. This is the idea. Okay. Okay. Does that, is that easier? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that. Okay. So always here, we can take a look. I have a little bit of a news for you. Who is the person is the subject. Super easy. Is the person who does the action. That's what it means by subject. Whom is the option? The person who received it. That's the easiest way to, to think about it. They are similar, but they are different. The different sides of the coin. One doing and one receiving. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think that. That is going to help, but but yeah, I think that we need to continue practicing. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's the the idea is you first part is academic, understand. The second part is the practice. You only get better with perfection, but it's important that first it's clear how what is the difference, and then little by little with more and more practice, then you are going to use and you're going to say, oh, I can't believe this was so complicated. But after you practice more, it's going to happen. Okay? Thank you, teacher. Of course. And I'm going to help you out a little bit. Um, I will give you, hang on. I will put in the, if you want, uh, for anybody that wants, I will put in the chat the link. If you want to practice more, if you say it's not clear for me, I think this topic, I need more practice. I give you a link to practice more. This you can practice on your own or don't practice if you don't want to. This is only extra information for the people that want to be clear. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. In this moment, what we're going to do is we are going to complete with our partners 3.2. 3.2, we are going to use the relative pronouns. Now we have an idea. With your partner, you're going to practice using them, which is correct. Who, when, where, who's, all of these. You and your partners are going to write it down here. Now, what is the important? When you rewrite it, make sure to add the commas. Where do we add the commas? Remember, you add the commas at the beginning and at the end of that re non-relative clause. So you add it at the beginning when you start, before the word who, who's, where, when, what, and then at the end of that phrase. And then you finish your sentence. Here, you're going to have six of them. The idea is for you and your partners to practice a little bit writing. Now that we have a better idea of what it is, now we can write it and have an understanding of what it is, okay? Um, I understand that sometimes it's a little difficult, okay? 
So we're going to do number one together, just because, yes, you're supposed to do it by yourself, but always I think that when we do it together, it's a little bit easier. And then you can do the others with your partners and have it correct. Is that okay? Yes, okay, teacher, thank you. Okay, let's take a look. Great. Here we have the sentence, Bangkok, which is the capital of Thailand, has many excellent restaurants and markets. So we want to rewrite the sentence, but we want to add the commas where they are necessary, okay? So what should be the relative clause here? What do you under, understand is extra information, which is, where do we put that? Which is the capital of Thailand. Okay, very good. And it's very important. This is a super easy trick. You mentioned which is the capital of Thailand. Very good. The way to think about it is when you begin with which, here is the verb is. If you have another verb, for example, here, has, oh, this is the second part of the sentence because it has another action. How do I know? Super easy. With my partners, if I eliminate this, Bangkok has many excellent restaurants and markets, it's still a complete sentence. So that means that this part is the extra. That's why I know that there I'm going to put the commas. So in the end, I'm going to write it. It should be the complete like this. Okay. I'll put it at the beginning. I'm going to copy the sentence Bangkok, comma, which is the capital of Thailand, like my partner said. And remember that after Thailand, I put the other comma. And then I finish completing the rest of the sentence the correct way. Always remember to add the period at the end to make sure that you don't have any problems with the platform. Super easy, right? The most important is learning how to identify what is extra and putting in the commas in the correct place in this activity. It's okay? Okay. Okay. All right. Let's try it. Yeah, let's try it. Let's try it. That's the best that we can do. So let's try it one more time. Let's see.
Hello, Eric. Hello. Is this your first time in class? Uh, no, this is like the second time, but um, I remember that I met to the first class, but um, unfortunately for some reason, uh, I couldn't log in later on after I asked for a link again, and now that I'm here. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't, because I haven't seen you in almost two. Oh yeah, this is the second week already. Um, yeah, <laughs> I see. Have you been able to work on the platform? Uh, just the first week. Now um, I'm just trying to get access to everything. Okay, okay. But, but I can get on time okay. for the next of the rest of the class and as well I can fill out all of the tasks or homework that probably you have been working with. Okay, great. Um, we are <laughs> already on unit three. We are, we finished unit one, we finished unit two, we finished the midterm and we are on 3.3. Well, today, right now we're at 3.2, but we're going to go in the next activity is 3.3. So in case you have the access to the platform, it's going to be 3.2. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, everybody's going to come to the class right now and we're going to check the answers to 3.2. And that way you, you can see the answers and get an idea of what we're looking at. Oh, good, that's no problem. And uh, thank you very much. I'm sorry for all of this long time. No but problem. I tried to get in contact with with the administration people, but they probably it's a long time, something. right? Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, guys, we are back. We are ready to check those answers and see how we did in 3.2. Um, let's take a look at number two. Anybody have an idea what we can do about Hong Kong? Hong Kong was a, a British colony until 1997, comma, when it was returned to China. Okay. So easy. you see, comma, right after, right before when, right? After 1997. There. Easy to find it. Good. What about number three? Who, who has number three? Me too. Mm -hmm. So where, well, I'm going to go ahead. Busan is a busy port city, Koma, that is located in South Korea. Okay, so Koma right after city. Okay. Yes. Nice. Number four, who's got number four? Me teacher. Okay. Bogota, which is situated on a high Latu in central Colombia has frequently changing weather. Okay, so for you, no commas. Uh, yes, after Col Colombia, one, one, one comma. Okay, so for you, after Colombia, perfect. Only yeah. there. Right? Yes, only there. Okay. No problem. Number five. Ah, after Bogota. Okay, so we have. Sorry, after, I, I. After Bogota. After Bogota and Colombia, or only after Bogota? After Bogota and Colombia. Okay. Bogota. Okay, good. Number five. Who's got number five? Nobody has number five. Oh, okay. Yeah. So number five. Yes, is teacher. I, I have number five. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> Montreal is a sophisticated city, comma. Okay. Where some for the best cuisine in Canada is found. Um, All right. Here we're gonna check this is not correct. With yes. some, it should be the opposite. Oh. It should be of but I don't know how it is in the platform. That's why we check together because there can always be mistakes, human error in the platform. Um, and then you said the other comma was after Canada, correct? Yeah. Excellent. And the last one, what's the last one? 
Uh, I, Go ahead. I would like to do the, the last one, teacher. So here it should be Sao Paulo, <clears throat> comma, which is the biggest city in Brazil, comma, is also one of the world most popular cities. All right. Very nice. As you can see, exactly. We can think about it as the subject. After each subject, that's where we have Montreal, okay, is a sophisticated city, comma, and then here, if we look, ah, uh, okay, so we do have to put not of, not the word of, or like, uh -huh, like it is in the platform to have it correct. If you change it to the correct one, <laughs> it's not going to be right. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you notice, what is also something different here, Canada does not have a comma. <clears throat> okay, Montreal is a sophisticated city. Why? How do I know that it's not correct the comma there? Well, imagine that you had the comma in, up to Canada and you eliminate the sentence, that part. Then the sentence is, Montreal is a sophisticated city is found. Oh, that's that's how I know that the comma in that situation is not correct to have it there. Did you see the trick? <laughs> you put the comma, you eliminate if it's correct or not in that situation. Here, in this case, if I put here and I eliminate this, Bogota has frequently changing weather. is still a complete sentence. That's how I know it's correct. Here, Busan is a port city that is located in South Korea. If I eliminate after the comma, the first part is still a complete sentence and so on. So all of the other ones were very good, only a little bit difficult and tricky, that last one. That last one was, well, that number five was to get you a little confused. Any questions about the relatives? <laughs> the relative pronouns, non-relative pronoun? Uh, teacher, something, something that I would like to add Yes. Is that for the number four, uh, you got to eliminate one space after oh, yes. Bosa? Because, yeah, I put the, the commas, but it was showing me that, that it was wrong, but it was because the space. Thank you very much for mentioning that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you write it correctly, like here, like we put here with the, with the space, the the platform is going to put it wrong. So make sure that you eliminate that blue, eliminate the blue space, okay? Is that okay? Everybody already corrected it? They submitted the grades? Yes. Okay, great. And that's why we check it together because even if the answer is correct, maybe it's not correct in the platform because of that, because of that. Now, we're going to take a look at our next topic, um, which is actually very nice. It's describing, it's like being a tourist. So let me show you the next topic, and we know what we're going to talk about. Okay. Here we have, um, Javier, can you please read the objective for this class? For sure. Um, in the class, participants will learn vocabulary to talk about cities. Excellent. But in this moment, I'm not going to show you any new vocabulary. In this moment, we are simply going to talk about cities that you recommend to visit and why. Why do you recommend it? What can you do there? What can you eat? What is attractive? What is the beautiful thing? Or maybe cities that you would recommend not to visit, okay? Or places that you say, no, this is ugly, is um, and you use your vocabulary, okay? So, as an example for me, I really enjoy um, La Palma. I think La Palma is one of the best places for me to visit. It's a very relaxing and outdoor feeling. And that's the idea. Whatever place you want to describe why for you, you like it, you don't like it. What is there attractive about that city? If you like San Salvador, no problem. Describe San Salvador. If you like, I don't know, Paseo Carmen. Okay, you describe this area for Santa Tecla, right? whatever it is for you. 
but this is the first thing that we're going to do to, to talk about it. So imagine you are giving a recommendation to your partner um, and you are telling them why visit or not visit these places, not only for the city, maybe for the attractions. For example, for me, I think Nehapa is an ugly city. It's very uh, isolated. There is nothing to do there. But once a year, it's very beautiful because they have a fireball festival. Yeah. And in this moment, the city is very uh, happy and full of energy. That's it. The same thing. Maybe the year is not good, but one time in the year. Maybe for you, Los Faralitos, or for whatever. I don't know what you like or don't like to do. But your partner is going to discover uh, because you're going to tell them. Okay. Yes. Yes, teacher. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Yes, sir. Hi, let's go over some words which will help you talk a little bit about your city. Describing a city, architecture, cuisine, costumes, festival, historical sites, nightlife, scenery, shopping. What are some important features for you? Talk to your classmates and teacher about the ideal place for you to live in. Try to use the words just learned. Hi, let's go over some words which will help you talk a little bit about your city. Describing a city, architecture, cuisine, costumes, festival, historical sites, nightlife, scenery, shopping. What are some important features for you? Talk to your classmates and teacher about the ideal place for you to live in. Try to use the words just learned.
All right, welcome back, everyone. Let's listen to those beautiful comments. This is El Salvador News. What do you have to recommend to all of those people from Australia, from Canada, from Argentina that come to El Salvador? What are the beautiful cities that we have and why? Excellent, Marco. Go for it. The mariachis callaron. We were talking about uh, some beautiful places. Uh, one of my 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 uh, my uh, classmates was talking about the the dunas, dunas, dunas beach that is uh, located in in La Unión. And she said that this the is a beautiful place. Uh, the 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 people there are very kind, are very polite. The restaurants are are in a in a high level of quality. So the food is so so prepared with the most uh, 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 the most uh, delicious taste. And it's a it's, it's it's too long the 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 time you take to go there, but but really it matters uh, make that that trip to Las Dunas Beach in La Unión. And my the other my the other classmate was talking about Santa Ana, like me. Mm -hmm. I am from Santa Ana. We were talking about a beautiful city. We have in the central historic of the city, we have a, a cathedral, uh, an ancient church, may, uh, build, build in, with um, Gothic style. And, and uh, we have a, a theater in the, 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 the whole city is, uh, is, is it had a, a, a Spain style with, made it with, with the beginning of the the 20 centuries, um, that that's 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 a show an special uh, time where the city uh, was concentrated um, to much money, to much uh, uh, capital here because uh, people were. Uh, were a, a owners of the 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 forest, the cafetales. I don't know how to say cafetales. So uh, that made that uh, Santa Ana was uh, the most important city in all the country, and it's a beautiful place. Okay, very nice. I love it. I love that you and your partners were describing some nice cities around here. Um, in the chat, you can also find out a little bit more uh, about what you are talking about. Mm -hmm. So, uh, cafetales are coffee plantations. Uh huh. Coffee plantation or cafeta. Mm -hmm. And there you have a little bit about El Salvador. In this case, it's Las Tunas. Okay, from La Unión. Great. Anybody else? Any other locate? I've never been to Las Tunas, but it sounds, I at least uh, from what I saw in the pictures, it looks like a very nice place. Beaches look very nice, um, has a lot of space, not a lot of rocks, right? Not like El Puerto, where there's a lot of rocks. So maybe interesting place to visit. Anybody else? Another one? Uh, I would like to participate. I was talking with Patricia and she was talking about sushi that the place. Um, she loves that place and recommend it because there is a uh, architectures, uh, architectures, architectures places. Um, after the war, I understood that the they celebrate like a fun festival, and as well there is like a sushi, a sushi plant lake close to there. And as well, uh, you know, uh, she mentioned that there is a lot of visit, a visit uh, tourists on that place. People can, uh, in every place that you can see, a lot of 
foreign people. What place is this, Eric? Suchitoto. Uh, Suchitoto. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This I never been there, honestly. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. I've been there twice, I think, uh, and many years ago, but mm -hmm, very nice place as well. Okay. Great. So now we're seeing like Eric, like Marco, we're starting to get an idea, you and your partners. So now we understand part of what we're going to do. Tomorrow, you have a oral presentation. We remember from last week. Well, how long is the oral presentation? Let's see if we remember. Nicole, how long is the oral presentation? One minute. Exactly. And guess tomorrow. What is tomorrow's topic, Rafael? What do you think is going to be tomorrow's topic? I don't know. Rafa, what do you think? What do you think? Uh huh. What are we talking about? No, I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> Objective. <in> Salvador. <laughs> ah, okay. There you go. So remember, tomorrow's oral presentation of one minute is you want to focus not only on the time, but on your fluency. You want to have 16 sentences in one minute. This is a natural rhythm of speech. This means that you are not too slow and not too fast. This is a normal conversation. So you don't want to have where you are thinking about what you are saying every, no, you don't want to speak like that. You want to have a normal. So prepare, think about, I gave you the link in today's chat. There you can find a lot of different cities around El Salvador if you don't know or if you haven't visited. The information is in English. You don't have to translate. It's already done for you. All you have to do is describe it in your own words. As an example, what are you going to do? Imagine I say, okay, Edwin, it's your turn. All right. Well, guys, today I'm going to talk about Conchagua. This is a city in La Union. Um, Conchagua has, and the idea is describe it. What about the city? Why it's popular? Why people should visit it? What can you do there? Uh, architecture, design, different things. These are all of the things that you want to include. The food, uh, the sites, the activities, all of this. Remember, you are promoting your country. You are speaking to other people. When you go to another place and you say, where are you from? It's Salvador. Oh, what is there? Most people don't know what El Salvador is. It's not like New York. I'm from New York. Oh, la Estatua de Libertad. It, people automatically. Oh, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Florida. Oh, Miami Beach. Oh, the shopping. No, right? Oh, I'm from Paris. Oh, the Eiffel Tower. No, in El Salvador, you are the promoter. Is your responsibility one minute, 60 seconds, give a demonstration of why El Salvador is amazing? Yes or yes? It's clear the homework. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yes, I have a yes, question. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Eric, ask. Yes, ask, ask the question, Eric. Go ahead, Eric, Javier is going to answer, okay. don't worry. Yeah, uh, my question is that I, I, I was double checking the, the link. It, it talked about many places of El Salvador. But are we going to talk about the in El Salvador in general? So like in a specific or in a specific place that we can choose here. Javier? I will talk about Sonsonate. Okay. So a specific place. Exactly. You're Good. going to choose a specific place, not El Salvador in general, but choose one. If you want to choose El Puerto, El Puerto. If you want to choose uh, you know, Conchagua, whatever, Consonate, Santana, whatever you want to choose. But there's a place where you feel comfortable describing. Maybe it's a secret place. Maybe it's a beautiful place that doesn't have a lot of tourists. Amazing. All right. I got it. Great. Thank you for your question, Eric. Thank you for making sure that everybody understands it's one specific place, not the country. Anybody else? Any other questions? No. no. All right. Let me ask you before we go. Let me ask you, Selena, how long is the presentation? No. Don't worry, Selena. I see. Oh, uh, my my mic, I is, mic. is yes. off. Yeah, uh, but one minute. Correct. One minute. 
Evelyn, how many sentences is our objective? How many sentences should we be speaking in one minute? 16 sentences. 16 sentences. Very good. Those are the two objectives for tomorrow's presentation when we talk about a cities in El Salvador. Okay. All right. Thank okay. you so much, guys. Have a great evening. I'll see you tomorrow. See you. See you. Good see night. You. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.